Hello. All right, I think you're all muted by default. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, I can. Howdy. How all you right. doing? Pretty good. How are you? Where are you? I am in Massachusetts, mm. a place called Rehoboth. How about you? Is Rehoboth in the west or in the east? It's, it's pretty close to Providence, actually. Okay. Very close. So I just finished a book about early, about you know the early and mid nineteenth century. So there's a line running down Massachusetts between the New York and the Massachusetts game, and you're well on the Massachusetts side. Oh yes, I'm waiting for that book patiently. So <laughs> been ordered for like six months now or whatever. <laughs> September eighth, we're still on track. Awesome. How are we doing, Joe? I'm doing. Oh. It's like we've got Tom who's muted. I don't know if uh, if Tom's trying to yeah, unmute him. He has to a few things. I'm sure, I'm sure Tom's on a bunch of them. So. Oh, there we go. That's Tom. How are you doing, Tom? Which Tom? Tom Zocco. Oh, I'm Tom, too. I'm doing another. The Library of Zoc. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Oh. Um, good backgrounds there. I see a lot of books all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. Any time to read these days. We have to read them? It's <laughs> <laughs> bad news. All right. Look at that. Jacob set me up so that it's already recording without me having to do anything. So I can take my sticky note that yells at me to record off. Perfect. So Adam, I used to, um, <clears throat> many years ago, sit behind the plate at Yankee Stadium. And next to me were a whole bunch of people from Providence that came down for like 20 home games. Yankee oh. fans, there were Italians from Providence. I learned a lot. <laughs> they told me that they weren't the only ones. Oh, that's great. Years later, I wrote an article about Italian Yankee fans in Brooklyn and Bensonhurst and places like that in Williamsburg, who, you know, rooted for the Yankees for ethnic pride reasons. Nice. But the Providence thing kind of shocked me. Yeah. I, I guess I never would have made that connection either. I live in Greenpoint, and not too far away, in the Italian neighborhood, uh, Yankee fans held a funeral for the Dodgers whenever they lost the World Series and paraded through the streets with a coffin with Dodger colors. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pretty provocative. And those Dodger Symphony guys were from our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The convention. Yes. Look, Peter coming in. Seth Deacon White and Doc Adams. Hey, Peter. Peter. Oh, Peter, I think you're muted. I can unmute you if, oh, or maybe we both hit it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Am I okay now? I can hear you, yes. How are you doing? Okay, great. How are you, Tom? Great, Good and you? see you. I'm not Tom. <laughs> Which Tom? Tom, Tom. All right, uh, we got a few more people that we should have here for the pre-meeting in a few minutes, I guess. So we'll have to wait for them. Okay. All right. Should I uh, should I just let certain people in for the pre-meeting, or does it make sense to just have whoever is early come on in? Yeah. Well, there you have Joe there, so we're just looking basically. Well, you you want to let in some other people? That's fine. You know. Yeah. It's okay. That's you might as well do it. We have nothing to hide. <laughs> All right, I've got Bob about to join as well. But well, here comes Bob Bailey. Yes. Hey Tom, Jake. I wore this shirt for you. Wow! Oh, that's awesome. 
Look, look at this bunch. <laughs> Anyone watch the Dodgers last night? I did. Uh, I heard they had a brawl the other day, huh? Yeah, Joe Kelly got eight game suspension. Seems a little harsh. I, there's a look in the eyes of some of those Houston guys, like, you know, they knew it was coming a mile off, and they they weren't they weren't that shocked about it. I didn't see a lot of passion there. Right. But I got to keep six feet away. Hey, Bob. There was one of the guys on MLB radio this morning said that he thought Joe Kelly intentionally hung the curveball up in Carlos Correa's face. And that just seems like impossible for anyone, especially someone with no control. <laughs> yeah, curveballs are... Curveballs are not exactly your brush back pitch. Yeah, it's not, not your purpose pitch, is it? No, and this guy, and Kelly doesn't know where anything's going. I know we only, uh, well, the only principal we don't have here yet for the meeting is Ralph. So he should be logging in soon. I know that, you know, we just had uh, recent email exchanges. So I know he's going to be attending. So. I hope uh, he'll get in before eight. Uh, so I just, I, I brought along my, um, I brought along my, uh, you have this Adam or Joe? Yeah, this is the agenda, right, for the meeting. So I just kind of made a couple of notations, uh, just going down in those minute orders, mm -hmm. you know, in the left-hand column, you know, would be Bob and I for the for the welcoming and introductions, and uh, and then it would turn over to you and Joe for the Overlook Legends, mm -hmm. and then it would go back to Bob and uh, myself for the Chairman's Award presentations, and and Bob is actually going to do the first one, and I'm going to do the second one, and then. Uh, Bob, Bob, it'll be then just Bob doing uh, uh, about the newsletter and uh, what he's kind of looking for and so forth and so on. A little bit of an update. Uh, Bob, you may want to mention, you and I may have, or may have not discussed this, but particularly guys who have written books, you know, giving them a reminder to... Uh, Give, give us some information about if they have a book coming out, you know. Got it. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, something else you might want to mention. Um, the, uh, and then back to me for the update on the Fred. And then uh, it's going to go to Tom with his report on the Brooklyn Symposium. And Tom, I... <laughs> I'm. I. I know you know what you have to say there. We got a. It's a. It's a complicated story. <laughs> well, I'll keep it short. <laughs> okay. And then we have Ralph, who do the uh, final report on, uh, of the of the meeting on the grave marker project. I know he has something that he he does have to say there. And then Bob and I at the at the end. Uh, with just anybody wanting to bring up new business, new ideas, or whatever. Uh, one of the things I was hoping, and I'll say this in the introduction, if uh, people who are participating, if they would like to hit the chat button, uh, first to say that they're in attendance and, you know, where they're from, you know, so we have Tom here, and he could say he's from Connecticut or whatever. And, uh, you know, we could just, like, kind of let them continue to hit the chat button, you know, uh, you know, as the meeting goes on. If they have any questions, they should also hit the chat button. And do you have any way of visualizing that on screen, on the side of the screen? Uh, yeah, I'm looking. Uh, where's the chat button? The chat button, if you if you kind of if you, liven your screen for a moment, it's at the bottom center. Hover your cursor over the bottom line of your screen. Yeah, of course, the bottom line of your screen. Do you have it there, Tom? No, I'm not getting it on my version here. 
Oh, we're, we're... So I think mine's organized a little differently. It might be, yeah. Yeah. But generally, it's at the uh, the bottom. Oh, there side. we go. Hold on, I got gallery view. Now I can see everyone. You got it. And where is? I don't still don't have a chat button. If you if you put your your mouse cursor down at the bottom of the screen, it might pop up oh, that way. I'm on an iPad. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I got it. It's in more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, more menu. Good to know. So when you mention it, Peter, you might just want to say that if you're on an iPad or iPhone, the chat button is under the more menu. Right. Okay. It's under the what? I'm sorry. It's a more menu that has like more options. Oh, I see. More apps. It's okay. If they're on an I iPad or a phone. Yeah. Okay. And just so I can mention, the way this uh, Zoom works is uh, the person who's talking will pretty much get the focus uh, for the viewers. Um, if I need to mute anyone on the side, I can. Like if somebody's making some background noise and that's distracting from the, the speaker, I can mute them on my end. Oh, okay, great. You know, like when Tom speaks, <laughs> um, I don't know how you and Joe are going to do it. You can either go singularly on the large screen. But when Tom speaks, he could get the, the full screen, you know, treatment or whatever you do there. Um, and, yeah. Um, yeah, however, I mean, can, can that be done? Well, a lot of it is, it depends on how the user sets it up. Um, but basically, whoever is speaking will get the priority, no matter what setup they have. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Depending on how the person on our end looks at it, right? Yeah. Ralph is on his way in, by the way. Oh, there he is. I see him here connecting. He's going to connect in a minute. Yeah, so Ralph will be our, our last. Hello there, everybody. Hey, there you are. How are you? Well, I'm, good. I'm good. All right, so Ralph is here now. So that's, we got all of our principals here that are going to give some reports during the meeting. And, uh, as we're just going to go down our, our agenda as we have it. And uh, your item, uh, I don't know, about six or seven on the agenda there, Ralph. So you follow, uh, you're going to follow Tom's report. All right? I, I and Adam, Adam will kind of, kind of, Adam, I could ask you to cue them if you would. You know what I mean? Like, oh, just to let whoever know that they're next. Yeah, yeah. You know, just to, like when Tom finishes, we'll make sure that uh, Ralph has everything ready to go and, you know, be able to speak and so forth. Sure thing. All right. Um, okay, we're starting to get people logging in here, I see. Uh, <laughs> I recognize some of these email addresses that are even just email addresses like, like Mark Pestano from up in uh, Massachusetts. Of course, Eric is on there. Yes. So if, if for some reason it does start to get a little noisy, I may just hit the button to mute everyone. So if that happens uh, when it's your turn to speak, you may just have to turn yourself back on or I could do it if that is an issue. Okay, okay. Uh, that Hi, it's be... Craig. Hello. Hello, I'm early. Hmm. Oh, we've got about five minutes yet, so that's okay. Jonathan, how are you? Doing well. Doing well, thank you. Nice to see you. Peter, how do you feel? All right. I'm getting used to my new speed, slow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> good, good. I try to do 4,000 steps a day in the house. <laughs> nice. Very good. Just don't roll down the driveway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I have to get to the mailbox every day. <laughs> What's that first step going down? It's all uphill back home. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, there's... there's Craig, Mr. Mr. Uniform. Hey, Bob, how are you? For an old man, I'm doing all right. Good to see you. Hey, Larry. How are you? Hi, Peter. 
Alexa, how are you? I'm great. How about you? Good, good. C congratulations on your award. Things are bad, but somehow that's good. That's how I'm feeling. You're all set? Did someone say Alexa? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Uh, oh, here. Let me, let me rename it. <laughs> Mm. <clears throat> How are you, Jack? No, I can't do it. I think it has to. Mm. No. Sorry, he'll just have to be Alexa tonight. Oh, that's fine. You can call me Alex for short. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, uh, this was supposed to be accessible afterward on YouTube, right? Uh, yes, uh, Jacob set it up kindly for us so that we'll record automatically and then I can uh, bring down the video and put it on YouTube or wherever he happens to be putting them. Great, okay, that's wonderful. Because I know a couple of people had emailed me to say they had a conflict, but then they, you know, I thought we would be able to show it to them on YouTube. So that's great. I don't know, a lot of pressure here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I've never like technically hosted one that's this size, so if, <laughs> if I have a couple mistakes, bear with yeah, me. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know what the eventual number will be of attendees, we'll have to see, you know. Right. So far we have uh, 26 people logged in, that's pretty good. Very good. And we got a couple of minutes yet. Hello, Joanne. <laughs> hey, Jim, how are you? Hi, Peter. I'm good. It's only oh, 108 so good, degrees so here. See, it's so good to see you since you moved to the southwest. Well, it's 108 degrees here today, and I'm happy to be inside talking to you. <laughs> what are you going to do if it gets hot? What are you going to do if it gets hot? <laughs> Well, we'll find, out, we'll find out on uh, Saturday when it's supposed to be 110. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> A uh, long way from the Berkshires. You could say that. <laughs> no, didn't work. Sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest, um, you know, one of the silver linings on this whole thing is having a chance to see a whole bunch of you that, you know, we probably wouldn't have a chance to actually see each other, you know, uh, we, we can't all necessarily make it um, to the national every year. So to have all of the faces in one place, I guess, is a, is a silver lining on all this. Absolutely, it really is. How you doing, Craig? Very good. Eric. Yes, sir. You're not going to throw any fastball, right? Oh, I'd love to. I just want to have a word with whoever set this meeting up and used the password of Crichton. It, it hurts me. It should have been Sprague. <laughs> Let's change that for next time, please. Yeah, I'll skip that meeting, Eric. <laughs> I'll change it to our new winner, whoever that may be. Mm. So far, we have 35 people uh, attending. I'll wait another minute and we'll start. And um, <laughs> I was thinking about a way. I was, hiya, Dave. How are you? <laughs> yeah, normally we wouldn't see a lot of people. Uh, uh, you know, at the convention, sometimes I'll, you know, we'll get about 30, 40 people at a, um, at a business meeting. So that's not too bad. You know, uh, we got 39 here already, almost 40. So hi, Steve. How are you? We can see whose bookshelves are neater. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, 
I want to welcome everyone to our 19th century annual business meeting. Hello, John. And uh, I was thinking about something today when I was a kid. I don't want to give away my age, but what I was thinking about was Captain Video and his Video Rangers. I can actually remember that show from the 50s on TV. And uh, so I want to welcome all of you video rangers, because we've come full circle now <laughs> from Captain Video. We're doing this by video. All right. So, so it's a little bit new, a new experiment. And uh, we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, I want to introduce uh, I'm Pete Mancuso. Probably, I don't know if you know me, I'm the chair of the committee. And uh, the vice chair here is Bob Bailey. So I want to introduce Bob. That's Bob there. And uh, Bob, if you want to say hello and uh, let people know who you are there. Uh, I don't want to give away my age either, but when I lived in Kentucky, playing catch with Abe Lincoln was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Bob's a little younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> You played catch with him in Illinois. No, no, he was the next county over in Kentucky. <laughs> so how we set this up, Bob and I uh, worked on this agenda. We normally do produce an agenda for our annual business meeting, and uh, it's very similar to what we uh, normally produce when it's done at the conventions, uh, done live. So we have an agenda that I think I included uh, in my email to you, you know, whether or not you printed it or not is is you know regardless we're just going to go down the agenda and uh we're going to be starting with what is traditionally our very first announcement um and i'm going to kind of turn it over right now to uh adam uh Dukowski and uh joe williams to do the presentation on this year's uh 2020 Overlook Legends, 19th century baseball legends uh, election. So this is now a saber wide election. And uh, I want to give, give it over to Adam and Joe to uh, tell you about that and who was selected this year. Adam? Well, thank you very much, Peter. Um, so um, I'm going to share a presentation on my screen to walk through the results and some information about uh, this year's election um, and kind of kind of what it means. Do you see my shared screen? Yes. yes. All mm -hmm. right. So, 2020 Overlook 19th Century Baseball Legend. We're all very excited about this, so let's jump right in. So, who we are, uh, that's the presenters. Uh, I'm Adam Dorowski. Uh, I joined the Overlook Legends Committee in 2013, becoming the chair later that year to give uh, my pal Joe a break. Um, I created the Hall of Stats, which is a, a site you might have seen uh, over the years. Uh, I'm a web designer and developer. Um, one of the things I do is I consult for sports reference, so working on uh, baseball reference, their, their world soccer site, and things like that. Joe, you want to give uh, your intro? Yeah, can you go to the next slide <laughs> so I can learn about myself? Oh, well, you, your intro is right here on this slide, right? It's still the title slide on screen. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Interesting. There you go. There we go. All right. Huh. My name is my name is Joe Williams. I've been a Sabre member for 30 years. Uh, I was original Overlook Legends chair. And I established the voting process with the late great Charles Faber and the late great Bob Gregory. Um, I'm sort of a Deacon White guru, um, and including De with Deacon White, I'm actually working with Dave Stalker and Gary Passamonte and Ken Kirk to uh, have a monument uh, dedicated in October for Deacon White, his brother Will, Leroy, and his cousin Elmer. Um, and I've attended the last 33, and if you count this weekend when I went to the field at noon and no one was there, the last 34 uh, Baseball yeah. Hall of Fame inductions. Excellent. All right. Uh, ah, my, my, there we go. So about the committee, so each year, Saber selects its overlooked 19th century baseball legend, as we know. So that's a 19th century player, manager, executive, or other personality that's not yet in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. 
And this committee made its first selection in 2009, and this year's choice will be our 12th. So that's a lot of selections. Here's the all-time roster of the committee. Uh, many of these folks are on the call today, of course. Matt Albertson is on the call. He joined us in 2018. As I mentioned, I joined in 2013. Charles Faber, a uh, founding member, was on the committee from 2008 to 2016, as was Bob Gregory, another founding member there. They put in a huge amount of work in this group. Eric Miklich is on the call as well. He joined in 2018 as well. Gary Passamonte, I don't know if he's on the call. Uh, he uh, joined in uh, 2018 as well. Ralph Peluso, uh, 2009, so basically the second year he joined in. Uh, Sam Reich, he joined in 2014 and just recently departed the group. He put in a lot of great work for us over the years. Uh, Joe Williams, who uh, just spoke, uh, has been here since the beginning and was the chair at the very beginning and is a co-chair with me now. And Tom Zacco is on the call. He joined us in 2017. So this is a very important election for this group. Uh, the 19th century was most recently under consideration in 2016 and then 2013 before that via what the Hall of Fame calls the pre-integration era committee. Then in 2016, the Hall changed these committees and now it's called the uh, early baseball era committee, uh, which covers the years from 1871 to 1949 and hopefully before those years too, because that's... That, not, not technically, but so they must uh, consider those years before them. So now with that change, instead of meeting every three years, the committee now meets every 10 years, which is very disappointing for uh, fans of 19th century players who you feel should get in the Hall of Fame because that kind of limits the opportunities. So, but this early baseball era committee is gonna meet this winter. So this is why this is a very important selection, but then they will not meet again until 2030. I'm going to check really quick to make sure. Oh, I have a few people to let into the group. All right, here we go. All right, next slide. Past selections. I want to run through the players that we have, well, players and uh, personalities that we have selected in the past. Our very first was Pete Browning in 2009, followed by Deacon White. Of course, Deacon White has become our first selection to make it into the Hall of Fame. In 2013, he was elected as part of the pre-integration era committee. Harry Stovey uh, was the 2011 selection. He finished very well in the 2015 pre-integration era committee election, uh, getting 50% of the vote. Bill Dallin in 2012, he's come close a couple of times uh, in, 20, uh, in 2013, that should say. No, 2012, December 2012 for the 2013 election, he came just a couple votes shy, getting 62.5%. And then the next time around, he got 50% of the vote. So good showing both times. Ross Barnes, uh, I'm a little miffed he hasn't been on any ballots yet, but uh, hopefully we'll get him, get him some uh, recognition soon. 2014, Doc Adams, he came out of nowhere to finally get on our ballots and, get, and quickly became the Overlooked Legend. And then uh, he very quickly got onto the Hall of Fame ballot uh, for the most recent pre-integration uh, committee ballot and finished First time on the ballot, finished with 62.5% of the vote, just a couple of votes shy. And then right after that, the laws of baseball came out, which makes you think that if uh, the timing had been a little bit better, Doc would have already gotten in. So he seems pretty well primed for uh, this election this winter, and we're really hoping for it. 2015, Tony Mullane, he was on that ballot along with Deacon White in December 2013, uh, 2012 for the 2013 election. 2016, Jack Glasscock, a very strong shortstop uh, that I've done a lot of research on. He has unfortunately not made it onto a ballot yet, but that's one of the things I'm really hoping for this winter. Bob Carruthers, same kind of thing, just a two-way force and a player that hasn't really gotten close yet, but we're hoping to see him step over that line soon. Uh, William Dummy Hoy, also a very recent selection. Um, hasn't made it onto any ballots yet, but there's a lot of uh, good good candidates to choose from this winter. Jim Creighton, of course, was our selection last year. And very similarly, he's, uh, he's one that hasn't gotten on the ballot yet, but um, we're hoping that by looking at those years before 1871, uh, that there might be a possibility for him to, to squeeze his way on in the future. 
So that brings us to the 2020 results. First of all, 341 votes was a new record for us for all of our 12 years. So thank you very much. I'm sure uh, everybody in this group was, was excited to vote and a lot of people um, throughout Saber seem to be very excited about this election. And that led to 341 votes, which was a new record. Here are the results. 12th place, Cal McVeigh had 254 points. Lave Cross with 289 finished 11th. George Van Haltren, 344 finished 10th, but his mustache finished way higher. Paul Hines, 358 points. Jim McCormick is another that has kind of come out of nowhere thanks to the sabermetric crowd uh, recognizing his very high wins above replacement totals. 359 points and an eighth place finish. George Stovey, who we unfortunately do not have a, a photo for, finished very well with seventh place with 417 points. Al Reach, who was also on that uh, December 2012 pre-integration era ballot, he had 422 votes, uh, points to finish in sixth place. Tommy Bond is yet another one that's come out of nowhere thanks to his sabermetric backing. And uh, fifth place with 431 votes after only recently becoming a finalist. Bobby Matthews, he's been in the running every year. He's in fourth place this year with 447 points. Third place, Chris Van Der Aha. He was very recently uh, on the last pre-integration era ballot, uh, but didn't come within 50% of, of uh, induction. But uh, he got on the ballot and hopefully he's primed to do that. So again, 462 points in third place. That brings us to second place. And this is another strong sabermetric candidate has, that has come out of nowhere and really climbed the rankings the last few years. Charlie Bennett, the great Detroit Wolverines catcher, who is uh, both a tremendous hitter and tremendous fielder. And that brings us to first place. And our selection this season is John Bud Fowler with a very commanding 685 points, more than 100 points ahead of anyone else. So John Bud Fowler is our selection for this year. So I would like to read the announcement. Uh, I've got a few bullet points up here for you uh, to check out while I just kind of run through the, the first page of our announcement here. So John Bud Fowler has been selected as Sabres overlooked 19th century baseball legend for 2020. The announcement was made today at the 19th century committee annual business meeting held during Sabre virtual. This spring, a record 341 Sabre members submitted their votes for the 2020 Overlooked 19th Century Baseball Legend, a 19th century player, manager, executive, or other baseball personality not yet inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Previous Overlooked Legends were Pete Browning in 2009, Deacon White in 2010, Harry Stovey in 2011, Bill Dolan in 2012, Ross Barnes following him, then Doc Adams, Tony Mullane, Jack Glasscock, Bob Carruthers, Dummy Hoy, and Jim Creighton last year. Fowler was a pioneering black player, manager, organizer, and promoter. He was born John W. Jackson in Fort Plain, New York in 1858. By 1860, his family was living in nearby Cooperstown, where he would learn to play baseball on the fields of the Cooperstown Seminary. Jackson went by the name of Fowler by the time he became a ball player. He joined the amateur Franklins of Chelsea, Massachusetts for the 1878 season. Fowler pitched for Chelsea in a game against the Live Oaks of Lynn, Massachusetts on April 13th. 11 days later, he pitched for a picked nine in an exhibition against the Boston National League Club, outdueling Tommy Bond, another finalist, for a two to one victory. These games certainly caught the attention of the Live Oaks, a member of the International League. And on May 17th, Fowler pitched a three nothing shutout for the Live Oaks over the Tecumsehs of London, Ontario. The game marked the first time an African-American played in organized baseball. This important game was just the beginning of a notable career in baseball. For the next two decades, Fowler, who started as a pitcher but could play all nine positions, faced racism from fans, opposing players, team administrators, and teammates, thus making each stop usually a brief one, despite often being the best player on the team. Historian Robert Peterson, in his classic book, Only the Ball Was White, stated Fowler was unquestionably of major league star caliber. As early as 1883, Fowler tried to form a colored league, and in 1887 formed the first successful African-American um, African -American barnstorming team, the New York Gorhams. 
1894, he would be the driving force behind the establishment of the famed Page Fence Giants. Fowler died on February 26, 1913. He was buried in an unmarked grave in Frankfort, New York. Saber put up a marker on the grave in 1987. On April 13, 2013, a street in Cooperstown was named Fowler Way to honor the baseball great. And that is our selection. And thank you. Yeah. Joe, what would you like to add? Uh, this is a great moment for me because I've been pushing for Bud for a lot of years. Uh, him and Doc are my two uh, overlooked legends I like to see get elected. And hopefully they'll both be on the ballot. I'm pretty confident Doc will, but I'm hoping this will uh, elevate him to the historical overview committee and they'll say, hey, let's put Bud on the ballot and see what happens. So um, I think this is a great day for, uh, for this uh, project and um, I'm looking forward to see what happens. Excellent. Thank you very much. If there are any, any questions, we could take any questions. Otherwise, I can send it back to Peter. Yes, and anybody, uh, let me just say a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Adam and Joe and the entire committee uh, for all of your uh, work in getting this done and uh, year in, year out. And it's, um, I, think, I think the results have been very, uh, very, you know, very good over the years. So, um, you know, he was one of my high selections, not my first, but he was up there. I think, I think he was my second. But uh, so anyway, you know, I was very happy to see that. Um, if anyone, I just want to mention, uh, some of you, I said this uh, earlier on before, some of you may have logged on. There's about 47 people logged on now. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to hit that chat button on the lower center of your screen, if you just scroll your uh, mouse down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a, a chat button. You can put a chat in there. Uh, we just got one now from uh, uh, Jim Fox, uh, Karen and Jim, when, uh, oh, when is Hall of Fame addressing this? How to get a copy of the announcement? Uh, well, they, they'll, they'll do this in December, right? Well, this summer they're going to be built. Well, the summer's here. Um, typically, they have a historical overview committee that uh, looks at a list of uh, up to 200 people, and they narrow it down to uh, 10. Um, and that ballot is usually announced in October or November ahead of the uh, winter meetings that will take place in December. Um, and we will be sending out a copy of the announcements, I believe, right after this meeting. Jacob is making this available, I believe, on the Sabre website. Um, and I'm sure, Peter, that's going to go around to the entire uh, 19th century group uh, through an email blast uh, probably after this meeting as well. Is that correct? That would be great. And also, anyone tuned into this meeting, uh, if you know anybody, any sports writers or anybody that have sports editors or newspapers, uh, feel free to link it, link it to what's on the Sabre website and send it to a sports writer or, that you may know because uh, that is like a press release that we just uh that adam and joe just put together there and it is a uh you know you may get it picked up by a local newspaper uh i also want to say uh my my younger <laughs> technical gurus here uh told me to mention that if you were using a tablet or a cell phone and you don't have an immediate chat button in view if you scroll to the bottom of your uh, screen, uh, you're, you'll see something that says more selections or more uh, options. If you hit that, that'll bring up your chat button. Okay. All right, thank you again, uh, Adam, Joe, and the committee. All right, so uh, next uh, on the hit list is our Chairman's Awards. Uh, We've been able to do this every year, I think since 2009. Uh, I think Bob Bailey, you were the first Chairman's Award winner, right? I mean. <laughs> the bats over in the corner, I just keep it away from the wife. Yeah, I, I don't know what you did to earn that, Bob. You just, you know, talked me into everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so Bob is gonna take the first uh, person that we named this year. And, uh, and then I'll announce the second person. And I'm yeah. not certain, I'm gonna just kind of double check if it's 
either of them around here, which I'm hoping they are. I didn't Ooh. see either one. Yeah, I don't see them on here. But so, we'll so we can say anything else. we want. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell everybody else anyway. Okay, Bob, you gonna hit take this thing? Thank you. Uh, the first uh, uh, recipient of the Chairman's Award this year is, is uh, Bob Focus from uh, Minneapolis. Bob was the uh, uh, moving force behind the uh, Minneapolis uh, City Symposium last fall. In addition to being a, a, a great researcher and participant in the uh, Fred uh, newsletter articles, uh, he's just been a, a marvelous, marvelous member. Uh, if, if you've read through the uh, uh, baseball research journal, uh, that, that has recently come out. The article by uh, Bruce Alderdice, if you look at the notes there, it's based on Bob's research and, and collecting data on uh, pre-1871 games as uh, uh, Bruce did his analysis of runs scored in the, in the era. So we're very proud to uh, uh, award the uh, Chairman's Award this year to, to uh, Bob Focus. And, and before I leave and give it back to Peter, I want to just tell everyone not the, uh, the other award that we were just all thrilled about this year was, was Peter's selection for the Bob Davids Award. Well earned, he works hard, he turned this committee from, from a, a moribund operation to one of the most active in Sabre for the, for the last de almost decade and a half. Well done, Peter. Well, Bob, you're here. I I couldn't do it without you, and I couldn't, uh, when I got the award, I was certainly honored and humbled, but there's two ironies, you know, you look at that, you look at that trophy, and what comes to your mind is not your reflection, but all of the many people that have been involved in our committee's work and so forth, and all the things that we've done, and uh, that's what really shines back at you, and uh, the second thing is, I had a lot of fun doing it, <laughs> so... It's a little bit of an irony, you know, to be awarded for something you had fun doing. So, but thank you very much again. I want to show you this is uh, our trophy bat. I don't know if if you can see that, but it has uh, Bob Tolk's name on it. And nice. that'll be uh, shipped out to him in uh, Minneapolis. Now, to announce the second win, there will have to show the trophy bat again. That trophy bat, I'll show that to you first. And this is something, by the way, um, I, we actually ordered these bats uh, quite a while ago because uh, our intention was actually to, uh, what we normally do is make this presentation of the Chairman's Award at our annual business meeting. Uh, but we also knew that our second award winner was on the program at the Fred. And uh, he was going to do something very special, which he started off by doing 12 years ago at the Fred. But we're giving that award. Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but it's John Thorne. And uh, I'll have, we'll ship that back to, to uh, John. And I'd just like to say, uh, I don't know, you know, introducing John for, uh, John Thorne is like uh, introducing Abraham Lincoln or something. You know? where, where do you start? But so I will say that John is a co-founder of our committee. Uh, and he co-founded that committee, I think now, I think it's something like 37 years ago. Uh, at the time of the first Fred, uh, he was actually our first keynote speaker. And he gave our address uh, at the very first Fred, uh, which was really, uh, you know, really helped put the Fred on the map in a way that John was there. And then, ever since then, at all of the Freds since then, uh, he has moderate, oh, he was also, by the way, in that very first Fred conference, when Frederick Ivor Campbell was still alive, he moderated the panel, uh, Fred, Fred moderated the panel discussion, and John was one of our four panelists. And uh, it was really a, an excellent panel. Uh, Bill Rysak, uh, uh, 
uh, Mitch, um, I'm trying to think of his last name, but from uh, uh, McFarland Press and, uh, and uh, Peter Morris. So they were the panelists. And then uh, John, John was a panelist there, and he did the keynote speaker. He's moderated all of the panels since then. So there's been 11 panels that he has moderated at the Fred. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 panels. And then this year, he was going to be our keynote speaker again. And I was going to present this back at the conclusion of his keynote uh, speech in Cooperstown. And uh, that was our plan, Bob. <laughs> that was the plan that Bob and I came up with. But of course, uh, something got in the way and we couldn't do the uh, Fred live. So, um, uh, and what he was to speak about was a kind of retrospective of where 19th century baseball research have, has come since the first time he gave the speech at the very first Fred. And so, you know, what we've learned in the interim. So I was really looking forward to that. <laughs> but, and I thought it was a good opportunity because I could give him the bat and he could just get in his car and drive home with it. He didn't have to worry about any shipping or plane rides or anything. But, uh, you know, <laughs> the best laid plans of mice and men. So anyway, those are our two uh, uh, Chairman's Award winners for 2020. And uh, who knows, one of you may be <laughs> the 2021 Chairman Awards winner. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Uh, I think that's it for now. We're going to move on here and I'm going to give it back to Bob uh, to talk a little bit about the newsletter. All right. Uh, the, the, good, the, the good news here is this is my last item on the agenda. So you want to put up with me again, unless I get my feelings hurt and I start to dominate the conversation. In any event, the newsletter continues to, to come on out. We've, we've been able to put it out uh, every quarter for the last, what, 13 plus years or so. Uh, uh, right now, I have enough for the fall issue and a good chunk of the, the winter issue. But we're always looking for uh, research pieces, uh, 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 to to run in the the uh, newsletter, uh, as you as you know by my occasional emails of uh, begging for uh, a, a copy. Uh, so if you've got an idea or you've got an article, just email it to me. My uh, email address is on the on the uh, first page of, of every newsletter, and we'll be glad to work out to see if we can't get these things uh, uh, run. Well, they, they generally run eight. 1800 to 2500 words some go a little longer some are shorter uh, but we like to have this broad array of, of uh, profiles of individuals events or uh, bits of research that you've done that is in progress that we can can uh, 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 highlight and go through in addition we have the uh, a page or, or more of the the news and notes where we sometimes we have difficulty in in page count because the committee is so active we are doing so many things with groups with their uh the, the uh, grave marker uh committee we have uh, folks putting uh historical markers up around the country uh people making presentations uh people writing books uh, uh if you have a book that's going to uh, come out send me a note. Uh, we would like to either uh, at least put in the news and notes that your book is due out, put the publication information and how people can order it, but also if there's a, a, a chapter that, that you'd like to uh, run within the newsletter, we, we have done that more than uh, uh, several times. So just, just let us know. But as we go forward, if you're doing something or have some idea of uh, or, or, or involved in something, drop me an email uh, of what you're involved in and I will try to get it uh, uh, fit in with the uh, uh, various things that are going on. If it's a, it's a, a big deal, we, we just may write our own story or ask you to write your own story and we'll, we'll, we'll run it in, in its entirety. But I want to thank, I, I, as I go through the names and I just uh, scroll through people that are here, I'll bet you there's two dozen of you that are on this call that have, have made contributions to the newsletter 
over the years. And I'm most grateful because I don't want to write any more than I have to write. I've got enough things to, uh, to write. I'm, and I'll, I'll close on that, that I'm right now working on the history of the Rule 5 draft. And anybody's got some information on the minor league draft in the, the uh, 1990s, I'm having trouble pulling some of that together. I think it's only in Baseball America because Sporting News was, was about gone from from uh, dealing with minor leagues by that time. But in any event, thank you again for all of those who, who have uh, uh, given us items for the newsletter. Uh, we look for some more and we have every in, uh, anticipation that come October 1st and January 1st, the next two editions will be out on time. Peter, back to you. Okay, Bob, thank you very, very much. And uh, the newsletter has, you know, just been looking really great and uh, so many articles of just, I'm really blown away by it. I really enjoy reading it. And uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, a credit to you to get it all done quarterly for all the years we've been together doing this. So that's about 13 years worth of newsletters uh, four times a year with a minimum of 12 pages. So, uh, you know, I want to thank you again for that. Uh, okay. Um, I see a couple of other people. Uh, have joined us, but I wanted to mention one of them is Marjorie Adams, and uh, she is, of course, Doc Adams' uh, great, great niece. And also, I wanted to um, mention that uh, Alma Campbell has joined us here this evening, and uh, she's out in Minneapolis area now, out in Minnesota. So, uh, welcome, Alma. Uh, <laughs> She's smiling. <laughs> and <Hi>. uh, <laughs> it's so now great. I'm to have... in Minnesota, but I haven't been to any meetings yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gone to any meetings yet because they probably haven't had any. <laughs> but probably not. <laughs> no, okay. They know I'm here. <laughs> well, well, wonderful to see you. Thank you. You right. too. All right. Uh, so let me go on here. And I'm going to talk now actually about uh, the Frederick Ivor Campbell Conference, uh, which we began in, uh, in 2009. And uh, we were coming up on our 12th annual conference. And of course, there's no great mystery why we had to cancel it. In fact, it was kind of interesting because Jim Gates and I had a discussion, uh, oh, maybe very late February and I was starting to get pinged by a couple of our members and our attendees to say, what are you going to do if you have to cancel the uh, Fred? And uh, I don't, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the kind of feeling that you get, you know, like a punch in the stomach. You think, like, oh, what am I, <laughs> what are we going to do, you know? So uh, really what happened was uh, we came to a kind of sensible decision after a few people had chimed in and we uh, thought it might be too risky for our members. Uh, John Thorne always has a way with words and he says it has all the appeal of a cruise ship. <laughs> so, that, so, I could, I, so I was able to conjure that up in my mind. Uh, anyway, uh, what we did have is we had 93 people registered for the uh, entire event, uh, 83 of which, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 82 of which were actually conference goers and then about another uh, 11 people that were going to be guests at uh, the dinners and so forth and so on. So it was, uh, you know, not an easy call. Bob and I tried to put our heads together and uh, along with Jim Gates and we were able to, to do what we thought would be the most practical thing to do. All of these people had already registered, they already paid, the checks had already been on the Sabre. Uh, so we're sitting on, uh, you know, all of those registration fees. So what happened was we went out to those 93 uh, people and we asked them if they would be willing, uh, first of all, all the presenters, if they would be willing to present the following year in the exact same configuration that we had this exact same program and schedule. So all of them agreed to do that. And in addition to that, we also had uh, all of the attendees agree to come back 
and uh, to hold the, the, the registration fee until the corresponding weekend, it's actually a Friday and Saturday, the corresponding uh, 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 dates for uh, 2021. So they are April the 23rd and April the 24th, 2021. So the only thing that has changed, and Tom, I think you got my email, I'm imagining, okay. <laughs> Do you think that that's possible? You think so? Okay. That's Tom Scheiber. He gave me a thumbs up. Uh, the Hall of Fame, what actually happened was Jim, uh, Jim Gates had mentioned to me that uh, the Hall of Fame had recently secured uh, quite a bit of a sheet music collection. And a lot of the sheet music collection was in the 19th century sheet music. So uh, we had already had the everybody confirmed for their times of presentations. So we decided to do like this kind of very extra 20 minutes at the end of Friday's uh, activities and do this extra 20 minutes or so right in the grandstand theater where they would do a, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, audio visual uh, display of some of that 19th century uh, uh, sheet music. And at the time, uh, Jim said, uh, probably either he himself would do it or Tom Scheiber might do it. So I said, well, great. And great, great on both counts. You can't miss with that. So uh, what happened was uh, a couple of weeks later, David Block actually had to get in touch with me. He was our special presenter. And he's having some kind of a physiological problem with his vocal cords. And although he wants to return to the Fred that, that same year, that, you know, that coming year, he had to back off doing the... Um, special presentation. So Bob Bailey and I kind of put our heads together and said, well, Bob had the idea. He said, we have, we have that sheet music uh, uh, collection that we were going to do as an extra 20 minutes. Maybe we can enlarge it just a little bit. And uh, we kind of got started to get a signal from Jim that he was retiring. So maybe that Tom Scheiber might be able to do it. Uh, and uh, Tom just gave me a time, <laughs> sent him an email just the other day, uh, you know, kind of begging him to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. But did you got my did you get my response, Peter? Did you I, I probably I, did I probably didn't yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll double check that it actually made it out of my outbox there. But uh, the answer is yes and actually that extra time is going to be very helpful. And and I think what we'll do is we'll expand it to be uh, more than just what came in in that one donation. We'll just cover <clears throat> you know the, oh, the, the right. topic well, of nineteenth century music. All right. We'll see how that all turns out. That's but thank you very, very much, Tom. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, great. That is super. So uh, that'll be the only change in the Fred so far is that uh, that one special presentation will shift from what David Block was going to do on his book, uh, Pastime Loss. And we're going to go over to uh, this 19th century sheet music uh, presentation, which will also be uh, some graphics involved. So uh, we certainly look forward to that. And thank you, John. It'll be now, extremely graphic. Right. Now the question becomes, Will this uh, same impediment exist? You know, at the time we, we made this cancellation, it was more than 13 months in advance, the new dates being more than 13 months in advance of the 2020 dates. And at the time, we kind of thought that that should certainly clear our situation. What might happen is the possibility that uh, the coronavirus won't permit us to do the uh, event live. So Bob Bailey and I <laughs> and some other people here will, be, will begin to do a little bit of brainstorming about what may be possible. And the things to consider is uh, to do a virtual conference is one possibility. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a uh, you know, a very equitable and fair refund of everybody's, uh, you certainly don't want to pay, uh, you know, where there's no dinners involved anymore. Uh, we did secure everything, including the dinners for 2021, and uh, our deposit is still sitting up there for the dinners. So there's not a problem in that regard. Uh, so we still have that option. But in the event that we cannot go to Cooperstown, our decision, which will be, We'll hash it out in the fall. 
And by the time we would do our normal winter newsletter, January 1st, uh, we would probably have a decision by then to dis or some option by then. And I'll be in touch with all of the presenters and, uh, and all of the registrants before, you know, in between. So, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, Bob, but we, you know, I know, <laughs> I know you already know about it, but you know, we'll probably have our work cut out for us again if it doesn't look good that we can do it live. Uh, we'll knock on wood, keep our fingers crossed that we can for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, the, the Fred being one of the, the least of them in a way. All right. Okay. So, uh, any questions on the uh, Fred or? All right, we can come back around at the end or at any one of you wants to post a chat question, I'm, I'm fine. All right, now, what we also had cooked up for 2020 <laughs> was a, uh, a place that really is special. And I, I don't know why I should say this, but it may have <laughs> something to do with that. But uh, so, I want to turn the uh, meeting right now over to Tom Gilbert to talk about a little bit uh, what we had in the works was a 2020 Brooklyn 19th century baseball interdisciplinary symposium. And Tom will fill you in on where we were going with that. Tom is the coordinator of that and thank God we got him. Okay, Tom. Uh, hi everybody. Um, well, um, there's a lot to say and there's, there's not much to say. Um, we were, you know, getting started planning for uh, this November when uh, things changed suddenly. And we, the only thing we'd really, I'd really accomplished was getting the um, venue, which took a little doing. Um, and we had a, we have a great one. Um, the good news is it'll be available a year from November also. And um, the St. Francis College um, History Department was interested in co-sponsoring the event. And they've been great. They have a nice facility. They've got the choice of auditoriums. They have space to eat. They have caterers. And they're right in Brooklyn Heights, which is the best place to be to talk about um, Brooklyn 19th century history. That was what we call Brooklyn Heights was the entire city of Brooklyn before the Civil War. Um, they're, I was, um, the only th place we got in the planning process was um, that we talked, Peter and I talked about me doing a tour on the Sunday, uh, the conference being on a Saturday. Um, there's a wealth of places to visit and I've done this kind of thing before we can, depending on the interest level, we could rent a bus, make a few stops, maybe stop at Carroll Park, Jim Creighton's house on the way to Greenwood Cemetery, but we hadn't nailed any of these things down yet. Um, you know, my biggest concern is coming up with a, a good list of topics. There's so much information there. We have to, um, I think we, we need to sort of limit it to a couple of issues. Um, you know, some of the biggest ones being uh, the idea that um, Brooklyn is the birthplace of baseball as a professional sport and a modern sport, um, strangely not widely known. Um, all the important baseball people that live there, played there, uh, are buried there. Um, so there's a wealth of material and, and I sort of feel like philosophically we should start with some big questions and big issues and work out from that. Um, the second issue is we have a wealth of great people on the baseball side. Um, getting the academics is a little bit of a challenge. Um, I don't have a lot of connections in that world. St. Francis can be somewhat helpful, but you know, I was basically just getting ready to tackle that and the whole thing got put on hold. And you know, we had a lot of hope of doing it this year. And Peter and I uh, were waiting to hear, well, was there gonna be, we, we thought if St. Francis was gonna have its classes as normal for the fall semester, that would be a good sign. And we agreed with St. Francis that when they got the word for what they would be allowed to do and what they wanted to do in terms of their academic year, we would take our cue from that. And what we got was no word. Um, because everything's on hold. Even New York City public schools haven't made up their minds of exactly what they're going to do as late as now. Um, and it is, as Peter and I discussed, um, not getting a definite answer by July, about July 4th was really a, a no. Because at a certain point, you can't plan this on a maybe basis. And we're not going to get anybody to commit to go. 
Um, and that's why we made the decision to postpone it. And you know, who knows what 2021 will bring. But um, you know, I think uh, early 2021, the winter and the spring, will form a group of people who want to work on this and get started, and you know, try to make it really historically worthwhile and and get quality people from the academic side. That will be my goal. The facility, we've got something affordable, convenient that'll work. I mean, if we can't have an in-person event, that's a whole other topic that we'll have, we'll be talking about. Um, I think it's doable virtually. I hope we don't have to do that. But um, if we can do it as we have done it, um, we have a cooperative institution that's going to help us. Uh, it's going to be relatively inexpensive and convenient, and there's nearby hotels and lots of great space they have there. So does that cover it, Peter? I, I think you have. Um, um, yeah, I would have mentioned that uh, what we would normally have done is that if we had this thing, if we were able to advance this thing for the 2020 year, which we had this uh, Saturday, November the 22nd, I think it was, or uh, that was the date we had for the event this year. And St. Francis College was all on board and thanks to Tom's efforts, and uh, they are co-sponsors and they, you know, being able to provide us the venue is huge. And, uh, you know, gives our only expenses, very nominal, nominal expenses, uh, and just for whatever we do with our luncheon. Uh, the second day tour would be an optional event uh, that people could select or not select. But uh, the location, as Tom said, is really great. It's in downtown Brooklyn and Brooklyn Heights. Uh, there's plenty of eateries and uh, there's lodging nearby and uh, so much baseball history, as Tom said. Uh, we are going to proceed probably as we go forward now from, uh, I know that Tom had an idea that I think is a great one where he probably wants to uh, create a couple of ticklers in a sense uh, of uh, some online stuff. Uh, that would either be presentations, or I know he, he mentioned something about a, even a little tour with Greenwood Cemetery online that's baseball related. And uh, we did that a number of years ago, and it was really, uh, really fabulous. And, uh, you know, we could, he'd like to do that in the interim to keep people's interest up. But uh, as we go forward, we will probably, we, ought, we do have a date for uh, November of 2021. It just becomes a question now, is that going to be live or might it be something else? Might it be virtual again? So, you know, we might work that we can have either option of doing it. We can still see. But uh, anyway, it'll be a very affordable conference in the heart of where baseball really did become a professional sport. Yeah. All right, Tom, I want to thank you so much for all of the effort you put into this uh, to date. And in securing a co-sponsor like St. Francis uh, College is really great, um, given the location of the conference. When we were doing the New York Symposium, I remember just thinking that very first uh, symposium, Ralph, you were there, you did the, uh, uh, the stuff having to do with, uh, with Larry McRae's uh, uh, protoball project and all the early baseball in New York. And we got that going. but one of the things that I thought all during that conference was that New York area baseball of the 19th century is so deep, we weren't even scratching the surface. So I'm very, very uh, happy that we, we can go over to Brooklyn and really give that the treatment it deserves in terms of baseball history. Okay. All right. Uh, Ralph. Are you there? You got to unmute now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, All right. everybody. Sorry. All right. So our, our last item on our agenda uh, is Ralph Carhart's uh, project that he chairs, the uh, 19th Century Baseball Grave Marker Project. And uh, Ralph, I'll turn it over to you now. Thanks, Peter. Um, so, well, just to go back, the, the last time I spoke to everybody was at last year's Fred, uh, the 2019 Fred. Uh, where I had mentioned that um, we had decided that we were going to move forward with putting a stone at uh, Bobby Matthews' grave. I later learned an important fact 
Um, Bobby Matthews already has a stone. Maybe should have dug a little deeper in my research before I announced that. Um, so uh, we uh, bounced around a few other names for a little while. Uh, and I actually, um, on the suggestion of our chairman's award winner, John Thorne, uh, took a look at the case of Luke Castro, who is probably not a, a, a well-known name, nor uh, necessarily one that is um, immediately thought of as going with the 19th century. Lou's one major league season was 1902. Um, but the, the bulk of his, his professional career was spent in the minors in the late 1890s. Um, he has the significance of, if you accept the 1969 decree by Major League Baseball as baseball beginning with the National League in 1876, um, he has the significance of being the first Latino player uh, in the Major Leagues. Um, their uh, suggestion came to me from John also because uh, there is an effort going on in New York City. He's buried out in Queens, actually about two and a half minutes from where I work. Uh, there's a, a, a movement going on in uh, amongst the local Queens Council people um, to recognize Lou Castro. So tying this in with that, um, I thought would uh, was a, a good enough reason uh, in terms of getting a little bit more publicity for Sabre and, you know, uh, um, what can come of that to sort of stretch our normal boundaries on, on what we consider a 19th century player. Uh, so we're going to move forward with Lou. There was a little, um, it, it took a little while to make it all happen, mainly because when he passed, his wife um, stiffed the cemetery. That's, that's a little grave marker humor for you there. Um, she didn't actually pay the bill. Uh, so I, I had to negotiate with them a little bit to knock down the 70 years worth of late fees that had accrued um, over that time. Um, but we got them uh, to give me a more reasonable number. Um, we actually just received the paperwork on that the other day. That also all got slowed down um, because of shutdowns due to Corona. But we got the paperwork for that just the other day. Um, we're going to get that fee paid uh, and then we will get a, a stone placed um, for Mr. Castro. Uh, as for who is next, um, uh, Peter had made a suggestion uh, of Bill Dalen, which is a good one. Uh, he's out here in Brooklyn. I was trying to recognize players buried in different locations just to sort of highlight the importance of different cities in, in the 19th century. But I feel like I kind of broke that seal with Mr. Castro here. We've gone back to New York after, you know, uh, uh, James White Davis uh, at, uh, at Greenwood. So, um, I'll take a look at Bill Dalen. Um, and if any of you have a suggestion, if there is another uh, uh, important name from the 19th century that does not have a stone, um, uh, send me an email, uh, thehallballproject at gmail.com. Um, I'll type it in the messages so you guys have it in writing when I'm done talking to you all. Uh, but shoot me an email if you have a suggestion for uh, an important 19th century um, player, executive, uh, anything. Uh, and, and I will certainly look into their story, present it to the committee, and um, maybe we can get another one placed. Uh, that is everything I have. Thank you very much, Ralph. And, uh, you know, Bill Dolan is also one of our uh, overlooked legends. So he was a selected, I think, 2006 or some, uh, well, I'm sorry, not 2006, but uh, 2016 or 14 or something like that. Uh, so, you know, maybe he is, you know, and he is in Brooklyn, too. And who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean, quite frankly, if we're going to, you know, if we're looking at the interdisciplinary symposium in 2021, it might make a certain sense for us to do that because we could have a dedication of that and be, you know, part of what that's. Right, you can maybe did. make that part of the optional Sunday activity. Right, exactly. Yeah, sure. That might be great. Plus, okay. he may get elected to the hall in December. Yeah, I mean... Possibly, <laughs> possibly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if he gets elected to the hall, that would really I, I have. I guess it a, sort of means I have to, right? <laughs> we'll have a turnout like we had for Pug Glavin up there in uh, Pittsburgh. That was the best so far. I got to be honest. Yeah, that it really good. was. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, okay. I see. Uh, somebody says here, uh, Jeff Flint. How are you, Jeff? Uh, it says, can you consider Zoom for future gatherings in addition to, uh, to joining in person? Not a bad idea, Jeff. I think maybe if we did something uh, like Tom has the idea of uh, maybe doing some ticklers for the, uh, 
uh, you know, this Brooklyn Symposium. Uh, maybe we we could do that and make them somewhat interactive, Good. Uh, where we could have some comments and back and forth, and almost make it a little uh, mini meeting. Uh, that is a possibility. Great. Uh, anybody else? Please, uh, please chime in and. Uh, I have one question for Ralph, if you can hear me. Um, do you guys ever consider restoring or repairing a grave rather than putting a marker where the own has existed? Well, that was what we did with PUD, actually, because um, PUD had something. It was just small and falling apart. And, and King Kelly is still on my list. He's, he's one that I really would love to do something with that has a stone, um, but it's, it's in terrible shape and likely won't survive the next half a century. Um, because as just, you know, we, um, you know we, we got that repair done to Creighton's grave. Right. Right, right, right. That was a big success. And I was thinking about uh, Tom Fitzgerald in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. and I believe his grave, he's a very important person. His grave is in a really bad state. Right. Uh, yes, we have, we have definitely considered and will happily consider again. Yeah. Okay, I'll suggest it then. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, you know, uh, in fact, Joanne Holbert, I know is still on uh, the meeting. And uh, Ralph, you want to have a big discussion with her about King Kelly, because she's run up against, uh, you know, she had this idea of civil, you know, doing something with that gravestone because it has cracked or whatever. Yeah. And there are real, some real restrictions there, you know. Yeah. She and I have spoken. He's in a very uh, difficult location. This, first of all, he's in a location where all of the stones are uniform. And sometimes cemeteries are, are not willing to um, alter a look. Um, the, the idea that I had, because I don't want to destroy what he has either, um, is, is trying to get something that's only slightly larger and, and wrapping it around it, encasing it in that. Um, right. He's, uh, he's on, a, on, a, on a bank where there really is no room around him in any direction to expand on what's already there. So he right. has a, a number of logistical complications that I'm mm -hmm. not surrendering on yet. I just need to, you know, get the right guy on the right end of the phone at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> right, you need the right guy. Hi, Joanne. Yeah, hello. Yeah, um, maybe a huge granite slab down in front of it. Um, you know, I've had a long conversation with the uh, groundskeeper in regard to that. Yeah, it is very difficult in that situation. It's very hard to add anything to it. Uh, but maybe there's something that we can do. Um, uh, I was there a couple of years ago while they were doing some maintenance and uh, the stone gets grimy because it's in the city. And uh, the, uh, the groundskeeper went over and sprayed the stone and kind of restored it to a closer likeness of what it should be. Took a lot of the soot off of it and everything. It's not cracked, at least as of the last look at it, but uh, it, it is just in a tough situation. It's in the Elks lot. The problem is uh, the Elks were the ones that buried him and they paid for the whole thing. And I think it would be a little bit presumptuous of us to change that. He's in good company. He really is. He's in very good company. Um, and it, not only in the, um, in, in the section that he's in, but in that entire cemetery. You know, Mount Hope has a lot of baseball players in it. And I sometimes like to think that they all come out at night and have a pickup game. They certainly have enough players to do it. Thank you very much, Bob, because you were the instigator for getting me to figure out how many baseball players were there. So, hey, yeah. Come, you know, I can't say come to the game. No, not yet. <laughs> so, but it is marvelous. It's, it's an absolute marvelous place. And uh, but the problem is that Mike King Kelly didn't have the money to get himself buried, and Elks did it. So he's in that section. It, it, it would be very difficult and challenging to do something. My imagination says that maybe a large um, granite plaque down in the ground in front of it. I don't know if they would allow that. They're very touchy about that. Uh, the Elks are the ones that are maintaining and overseeing that lot. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And I look forward to reading the, uh, the, mud -filled, uh, the Mudville Dispatch. The Dispatch. <laughs> oh, yes. We got, we got chorus girls coming out this week. Okay. Who would have thunk? <laughs> <laughs> Not again.
<laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you got to Oh, I'm telling you, the, the stuff that I found. You know, I, no, actually, I think it finds me. <laughs> okay. Um, and I let. I wanted to also. I see that uh, Don Jensen just logged on here. I know he had a, a previous engagement tonight, and uh, yeah. it's great to see you, Don. Great to see you. Um, with, with with yeah, I had to teach 10 minutes ago. <laughs> all right, but there is a YouTube version of all of this, uh, Don, so you can, uh, uh, we'll be able to get it out within a day or two, and uh, you'll be able to log in and see it. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, how about any other questions or comments? We all okay? All okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to again. I want to again thank uh, Adam and uh, Joe for being the kind of technical. Uh, Adam for being the technical <laughs> here of getting us uh, all logged on together and so forth. I'm a little bit out of my element with stuff like this. Yes. Uh, but we all are now video rangers, as I said in the uh, beginning. So uh, hail to Captain Video. Yeah. Uh, he finally, uh, <laughs> All these years later, uh, practically 70 years later, he finally came into uh, <laughs> reality. Uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. I just wish everyone a, uh, a very safe, uh, remain well and uh, stay safe. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll, be get it. we'll be together soon. We'll have some yes. uh, emails out. And again, if you want to, replay anything you can see it again on youtube in a in a day or two okay all right adam mm -hmm. thank you guys okay. thank right. you thank you very much thank you. all right thank you all and uh, stay thank well you. Okay. thank you everyone all righty yes. i can't get used to that baseball with that can sound <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no. okay. be well everyone take care okay. thank all you all right Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Bye. Take care. Be well. Be well. Bye. Thank you again, Tom. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So let me have play this. One.